eco is about uh, energy, renewable energies or energies that do not produce carbon and going to excess scale. So, well, renewable energies can, in principle, power uh, the whole world. Here in, in green, you see the, the amount of solar energy that uh, solar energy that comes to the earth per year, and the, the small dot in brown is the, the amount of energy really used. Or you can also see wind. All of them could cover uh, ideally the, the whole need of energy. So, well, we are currently at, at a transition in energy. Uh, due to climate change, we need to move fast towards energy that do not produce carbon dioxide. And on the other hand, uh, at the computing world, we are in a transition because uh, the, the architectures, computer architectures that we have now, as you already know, can, cannot scale up. They would consume too much energy. So, well, um, ECHO is uh, related to these two revolutions that must happen. And so it's organized in four key exascale technical challenges and five renewable energy scientific challenges. I am the leader of one of them, that is wind energy. So, uh, we are concentrated on, on five low carbon energy sources, meteorology, material, water, fusion, and wind. And we are re redesigning codes uh, in, in these fields uh, to going towards exact scale. So I will briefly introduce the different uh, scientific challenges. The first one is meteorology for energy. I'm not an expert in this, so I will just present it very lightly. So this is the, the typical uh, codes used to, to simulate the weather. Uh, mesoscale simulations, typically known by this name. So these are codes that simulate the, 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 the wind and the temperatures over a uh, huge piece of land, a whole country, or even all of Europe. And uh, this is important for, for, for energy, both for wind energy and for solar energy. And it's important to, to reduce the, the uncertainty by uh, performing very huge ensemble calculations, that is 1,000 of calculation at a time with different parameters. And uh, well, this is the, the the main challenge here for for this uh, work, uh, for this scientific challenge, and the codes used are ESIAS and EURAD IM. Water for energy. This is related to the use of water for the production of energy, both uh, hydropower plants and geothermal uh, energy, and it is related mainly to the simulation of water through porous media, that is uh, the flow of water within the earth and also the, the surface uh, movement of the water to simulate, well, the groundwater and uh, the, the whole uh, river system within Europe. There are two codes, uh, two flagship codes. This is a code that will go to Exascale, Parflow and Shemat. And we are working on porting these uh, codes to the, to the new exascale architectures. Wind, I will talk about wind later. That is my own scientific challenge. So I, I will skip this slide for the moment. Materials for energy. Uh, this is related to, to several different areas in energy, for example, solar cells, uh, so the new materials for solar cells, both organic and inorganic, the possibility of simulating more than 1,000 atoms, perovskite uh, cells. The two flagship codes are KMC and Liv Negev. Uh, this has applications, as I said, to photovoltaics, but also to capacit uh, supercapacitors, batteries, and even, even other areas such as blue energy, that is energy obtained from the salinity gradients, and even also from temperature gradients. Uh, and finally, fusion for energy. Uh, fusion energy has a, a great potential. It has been explored uh, for well, several years now, 
and it could bring uh, upon a, a huge transformation. And well, but the computational requirements for these simulations are very big, and the things that, that need to be understood need a huge computational power. So th there is a need of using five-dimensional solvers to, to cope with magnetic equilibrium and there are needs to develop new numerical to tools to address the core edge issues. If this would, would work out, uh, the objective is to, to shorten the, the time to market and possibly produce energy at a much uh, lower cost. So, well, I have mentioned all of the scientific challenges. They all have ambitious scientific goals needing exascale. Uh, each of them have one or more uh, flagship codes with a clear roadmap to exascale. And obviously important scientific and societal impact, uh, such as, uh, well, helping in reduce the, the, the impact of, of climate change. So what about the project? ECHO is now in the second phase, as most of the, the projects already presented. Uh, it is organized around a, a strong French and German hub. Most of the partners are from Germany and France. The, two, the leader comes from SEA. Uh, and uh, then the second most important partner is Ulich. And then there are some partners from five different countries, with Spain, Italy, Poland, Belgium, and the United Kingdom. Uh, how is the, the project structure? First, we, we can see the, the structure we had in ECHO-1, where we had uh, four different work package, meteorology, materials, water, and fusion. Actually, in, in ECHO-1, uh, wind was included within meteorology, but actually there wasn't much uh, much scientific uh, intersection between these two areas. So now it's a separate scientific challenge. And the important thing that was that in ECHO there was a one word package related to advanced mathematics, linear algebra, and numerical methods, and, uh, yeah, and optimization of code. But then it was decided that it would be better to reorganize this in a different way. And this is the approach we have followed in ECHO 2, where work package one is all of the scientific challenges together. And then the, the different technical challenges like programming models, scalable zones, solvers, input and output, and ensemble runs are different work packages and the scientific challenges interact with each of them, and some of them have more interaction with one of them and some of, with another one. For example, ALIA uh, and WIND has a strong interaction with programming models. This is in uh, 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 programming for, for, the, for the new uh, exascale architectures, uh, scaling to huge number of cores, and also optimizing the code so that it is faster. We also have a strong interaction with the linear algebra people. So we have a fast and efficient linear algebra packages. And for example, meteorology has more interaction with ensemble runs, where lots of runs are, are run at the same time. In, in relation with the stakeholders and, and the different communities related to, to energy, we have a, a strong collaboration uh, with HPC3 and also the most important collaboration we have is with ERA, the European Energy Research Agency, and we have created a new joint program called Digitalization for Energy, where ECHO is a, a partner. We are working on this now. Herbert, sorry, Herbert. We sometimes we have problems with your audio. Sorry. Can you please keep the microphone uh, easy to be. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Uh, finally, I will come back to wind energy. That is my own scientific challenge, and I will describe this in more detail. 
So what do we plan to do in the Wind Energy Scientific Challenge? We plan to use a large eddy simulation for the flow over complex terrain and also uh, for simulating the, the individual wind turbines in, in big detail. And uh, this, finally, the, the final objective is to able to put these two subtasks together and be able to simulate a whole wind farm with a, all of the wind farm with several wind turbines working at the same time. This will allow to obtain an understanding of the flow physics and the whole wind plant that uh, will, uh, will help us uh, reduce the cost of energy and um, produce much more energy from the, from the same resources. So the flagship code is ALIA. And one of our biggest ambitions is to be able to simulate up to 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 11 grid points on unstructured grids. The impact we expect to have is to optimize better the position of the wind turbines to maximize uh, power output and reduce turbine maintenance. And by doing this, we expect to increase the European competitiveness by reducing the cost of wind energy. So why do we need extra scale for wind energy? The, there are a lot of different temporal and spatial scales um, involved in wind energy from the simulations, uh, uh, the movement of, of the wind and the climate on the, on the whole earth. This, the mesoscale simulations that are these, uh, well, typically used by climatologists to predict the, the, the weather that obviously affects the wind turbine. Then we have the microscale simulations. These are simulations, CFD simulations, of the flow over a wind farm that are obviously uh, affected by the previous ones. And uh, finally, in the smaller scale, we have the simulation at the wind turbine level where we can uh, have effects of uh, mesh sizes of less than a millimeter if we want to simulate the, the flow over the the turbine blade accurately. So uh, I'm trying here to, to introduce a little bit more of what we do. These are some simulations we typically do for Iberdrola. We have a long collaboration with Iberdrola. We have been working with them for more than five years now. And what do we do? We, we simulate the wind over a, over a wind farm. And in this case, we have also included the wind turbines, but on a very simplified way, just as a, as a volumetric force in the position where the, the wind turbine is. And this allows us to extrapolate uh, the, the wind from one or two masts that the, the, the wind the company has measured to, to the whole terrain, and in this way, decide where to position the wind. A little bit more on the same, we can present these results on, on Google Earth to have idea of, of the velocities and also on the turbulent kinetic energy. And we have been doing this with Iberdrola with RANS. RANS is uh, one of the two typical techniques to simulate flow, uh, and it is robust uh, and quite cheap but it has its limitations. And in ECHO, we are planning, we are going towards LES that is much more accurate, especially when there are uh, important separations, as you can see in this video, and it gives much more detailed information, but at a much higher computational cost. This is the simulation of the flow over the balloon hill. This is one of the most important experiments uh, at the moment on flow over complex terrain. So some of, some of the other work we have been doing, we have been working on the Korna Mosen test site in, in Sweden. This is a much more complex uh, geometry than, than the previous one. Uh, you can see here the position on the map, on the Swedish map. And we can see the, 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 the topography and also 
the the forest um, the, the the trees actually affect the the wind pattern a lot so this is measured by lidar and it's also an input to the model here we can see our results for our simulations at, at two two cut planes these are the 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 velocities the wind velocities you can see a, a strongly turbulent flow as can obviously be expected and this has been uh, computed with resources provided by by, by the rest the spanish uh, supercomputing network some further resor uh, results from for this case is a result for the co criterion of the vorticity that somehow allows us to see the structures that are forming this turbulent flow and as a second line, uh, we have started with this uh, within ECHO2. This was not part of ECHO1, and this is an area where we have uh, less experience. This is the simulation of, 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 a, of a wind turbine in, in big detail. We can simulate the, 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 the real blades and, and, and their rotation. In order to do this, part of the mesh is uh, rotating and part of it is fixed. So uh, there needs to be a coupling strategies between these two parts of, of the mesh. Uh, we have obtained a support letter from, from Vestas. Vestas is the, the biggest wind turbine producer in the world, and it is located here in, in Denmark, in Europe. Uh, well, this is the, the kind of simulations that we are starting to do in this area. The final objective, as I said, would be to combine a, a whole wind farm with the rotating blades that would allow us to, to obtain a, a much better understanding of, of the flow. This is a cut where you can see the velocities. So finally, more on the technical side, we are working on co-execution. This is uh, using Alia. Alia is the code we developed at BSC, that is the, the, uh, the pre-exascale code. We are pushing in wind energy. Uh, and co-execution means using both the, the CPU and the accelerators uh, in order to take advantage of both of them. We have already done some progress in this direction. We also need to work on fast and scalable mesh partitioning. We are using the space filling curve approach for this. This is how to partition our mesh so as to give the information to the different subdomains. And this now we are doing it in parallel and well, it's, it's a key advance that we have enabled. As I said before, we need to have this dynamic coupling between the rotating part of the mesh and the, and the fixed part. We are also working in node level optimization in collaboration with George Hagar from Erlangen University. He is uh, very specific on node level optimization. And we are also working with POP. We have organized uh, a hackathon that would have started tomorrow, but unfortunately had to be suspended. And finally, as I said before, we are planning to, to scale up to 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 11 uh, grid points of on our structure grids. This is a, a huge challenge. We, are, we currently have been able to simulate up to 10 to the 9 uh, uh, grid points. And well, so we, we, we hope that we will be able to meet this target by the end of the project. Finally, we have a strong collaboration with Word Package 3, that is the pa package on linear algebra, both uh, uh, direct and iterative solvers. We have interfaced with several of them, and uh, some of them produce uh, very good results compared to, to the in-house developed uh, solvers that we have within Alia. AGMG, for example, has uh, provided speed ups of five and even 10 times for some problems compared to the to Alia's own solvers for some specific problems, specifically LES problems. So which are the benefits of all these we are doing on uh, simulating the, this entire wind, uh, wind farm, including the four rotor, full rotors? This will drive innovation and improvements in wind turbines 
and the wind farm provide knowledge at a fidelity that is unattainable at field measurement campaigns. It's important to note that in wind energy, uh, experiments are very hard. It's not possible to, to, to do an experiment of a real wind farm. You can do something that is scaled down, but it provides data with limitations. And then you can do measurements in a real wind farm, but this also has its limitations. And also the, the, the effect of the boundary conditions is very difficult to take into account. So we expect to complement and bridge the fidelity gaps in experiment by a better understanding of the flow within the wind farm by means of computational modeling. And uh, how will this affect the in the in in real numbers? We expect to make uh, wind energy cheaper and much more competitive. Uh, wind energy is already competitive against uh, fossil sources. Its cost is about five cents per kilowatt hour compared to a little bit more for for fo fossil sources, but it can be lowered even to two cents per kilowatt hour and this will rule out fossil sources completely. Uh, moreover, uh, detailed simulations, LES simulations, especially at the rotor level, can help to understand noise production and help decrease it. This is also very important for wind farms that are uh, positioned close to the, to the cities. So, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Herbert, for your presentation. Really interesting and, and challenging one, of course. Uh, if there are questions for Herbert Owen, please use the chat channel so that you can you can share with everyone. But meanwhile, uh, Herbert, I have a, a question for, for you. I have seen that in your consortium you have a one SMEs, uh, but in the other in the other way, I see that your technology is so let's say uh, devoted to uh, huge companies no? so somehow uh, how do you think how can you uh, let's say focus on small companies but also having this huge technology endeavor that i see more uh, targeted to huge energy companies in, in europe and in spain of course well, this is kind of a paradox of uh, centers of excellence. On, on one side, they, they push us to go towards the exascale and, and to work on new architectures. We have discussed this within the project quite a bit. So if you want to go towards exascale and, and, uh, and, and you do meshes of 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 11, uh, uh, nodes and this is very expensive co computations and this is what uh, what we are being asked for within the European community they want us to, to have these exascale demonstrators and, and obviously then uh, trying to think of an SME that can really use this now uh, in the short term it, it is not feasible because the resources are, are huge even even for even even for for the big companies uh, exascale resources Iberdrola is is not close to having exascale not even petascale resources they use Mare Nostrum and they have some small in-house resources Besas instead has bigger uh, uh, computational resources. So how to get uh, SMEs into this is, is very difficult. We have done some collaborations uh, within CASE. We had a collaboration with a small SME called Vortex. They have a, a bladeless wind turbine. This is kind of a mass that oscillates and obtains energy from the wind in this, in this way. It enters in the resonant frequency. And well, we, we try to work with small companies because, well, it's, well, we believe that they need it. But it is hard, uh, this, this dual objective that uh, the European community asks us of going towards exascale and then getting close to SMEs. There are some particular SMEs that are very technology-oriented and 
well, this, uh, this could be a, a good channel, challenge, uh, channel to, to get in contact with them. Yes, thank you. I agree. I agree completely with you that this is, uh, let's say, the technology part is a huge challenge, but also this, uh, I would say, transfer part is also important. And, 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 and sometimes this is a barrier to get those technologies uh, in front of the business context.